Hello and welcome to the next episode of Fluid Simulation Made Easy. In this tutorial we are going to implement how we can retrieve our neighbors from neighboring cells. In the last episode we implemented our neighbor search so we can retrieve all the particles in one cell by the grid index. Unfortunately this is not enough. If a particle goes to the edge of a cell, you can clearly see that there are still particles who are, um, well, actual neighbors to the particle, but are not detected. So we need to include these neighboring cells to the neighbor search too. By adding the neighboring cells to our neighbor search, we now get all the particles we need. And all the particles are this time in fact, neighbors. But there's one small optimization we can do. We don't need all the particles from all the cells around us. We only need the particles which are likely to interact with us. And this is usually in a certain distance. I'm gonna call this interaction radius. And this radius determines if a particle is our neighbor. If the distance is greater than the radius, then it's not a neighbor. And if it's less, then it is a neighbor. One side note about how to choose a good cell size. In our case, the cell size is dependent on the circle's radius. The circle's radius is the same as the cell size. And as a result, we have to iterate through all nine cells. You can also just use four cells for the neighbor search, but this is a little bit different to implement, so we will skip this for now, and maybe in the future I will do a tutorial how we can do this approach. All right, then let's jump to our code and see how we can implement that. This is our uh, result from the last episode. We are only getting the content of uh, one cell. And now we need to get the neighbor cells too. So let's jump to Visual Studio and add this functionality. For this, we will go to our fluid hash grid.js file. And we are adding a new method. And this will be um, get neighbor of particle index with a index. And this one will be the index of the particle. Like if you want to have particle the, the from the list of the particles, like at index five, then you will pass in here five. And then that's the particle then. All right, then we need the uh, we need to declare a neighbors a neighbors array. The position we need to retrieve the oh <laughs> okay I forgot to turn it off again. There you go. Uh, then uh, the position we need to get the position from the particle. So this dot particles at position i dot position um, then we are converting the the particle index to the particle grid index and i just want to check if i already have that somewhere so i can use that no doesn't seem like it ah i can just copy this one all right then i get the grid and uh, let's say I'm going to call this one particle grid X and particle grid Y. <clears throat> All right, and then our for loop. Here again, I'm going to declare an X it's minus one. X smaller equals to one and X plus plus. And here we are iterating um through our neighbor cells from the left to the right 
and the same thing for the y axis. Okay, and then I can get the actual uh, neighbor grid index, and this is just the particle grid x, the cell of our particle, um, plus the neighbor cell. And if that's zero here, right there, then we are at our center uh, cell, the cell of the particle. Then the grid Y. This is also particle grid Y plus this one. And then we can retrieve the hash value just saying cell index, cell index to hash. Here we're gonna pass the grid X and the grid Y. And then I'm gonna say the content, like we did in the simulation class, right uh, there. Um, here I'm gonna call the get content of cell method now. So this dot get content cell for this particular hash id and i'm going to call this hash id so you need to change this one all right and then i can say neighbors equals neighbors dot concat okay and here i'm just adding all the found neighbors to the current neighbor list. Um, I think you can use in C Sharp, I think, or in Java, I don't know. Um, you can use um, at all, the at all method, and that's just fine. And then I'm gonna return the neighbors, and uh, that's it. Um, I hope I did everything right, so let's jump to the simulation. And I'm going to change that code to um, get neighbor of particle index. And here I just want the neighbors of the particle zero, just for testing. Um, I don't need that the crash ID, hash ID now anymore. Um, I think the mouse position should be set. So... All right, and then uh, let's jump to the let's jump to the browser again. Save and refresh, and there we go. That's our neighbor for um, our first particle. And uh, I wanna change the position of the particle too. So I don't know if I did this. Where did I do that? Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say um, the list of particles at position zero. Dot. I think it was position, right? Position, yeah. I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna set the position of the particle now um, to mouse plus. Right, and if I jump now back to the browser and refresh, you hopefully see that we get our neighbors now. And that's it. What we will do in what, uh, I mean, what we're usually going to do is we will also add a radius to that to get only the particles in a particular Radius, now we are getting all the particles in the neighbor cells. I can show you what I mean um, by adding a radius. Um, we could technically here, right there, um, iterate through, um, well, of course we're gonna iterate through all of the neighbors, but we can also say, well, here we get the particle. Um, let's do it like this one. If the particle dot, um, well, 
one more. We need to create a distance, a direction vector. Direction from the particle position. And we do that by subtracting the particle position. You don't need to write that too. I'm just going to show you what I mean. Um, we are subtracting the particle position with the mouse position. And then um, we're getting the distance from that. And here we can say, um, if we look to the vector, we have, okay, we only have a length method. I'm going to add a length to method here too, because it's more efficient than the length method. That's just a squared length, basically. And we are avoiding the square root. So distance squared. Squared is um, the direction. Length two. And now we can say if the distance squared uh, is smaller than the, uh, let's say, an interaction radius, the interaction radius will be the radius of a particle um, where other particles can interact with that particle. And this interaction radius is in our case um, will be will be dependent on our cell size which is currently 25 so i'm gonna say this will be um 25 and if the distance squared is smaller than this interaction radius or small equals um yeah, then uh, it should interact with that particle, or in our case, set um, the color of the particle to orange. All right, and also something really important, and uh, must say sorry too. I made a mistake in the flash, uh, the fluid hash grid, especially um, in the cell right here this needs to be called neighbor.push with this one i think i had um i had previously i had um concat which is wrong um i have to say neighbors.push and then with that content that's the equivalent to add all so um please change that to this one uh, yeah, that was a mistake from my side. Sorry for that. All right. Um, yeah, when we change that, uh, now we should get the right uh, particles. So let's go to the browser again. Save and refresh. Let's go to the browser. And there we go. There's our cells. And here's our interaction radius in action now. Before we had um, all the particles, I can turn it on again. One moment. There it is. If I refresh, you see all the particles from the neighboring cell. And if I activate the uh, the distance check for our um, interaction radius then you see just all the particles in our interaction radius all right and uh, yeah that's already everything for this episode sorry for again for my mistake in the fluid hash bit um, and uh, yeah hope to see you in the next one in the next episode um, I'm going to show you how the main algorithm is working and how we can implement that. That, that, that too. <laughs> um, all right. Um, then thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next episode. Have a nice day and 